We have a customer that drove far to bring us an Xbox One S. He said the cat peed on it, pissed on it. And you know how I hate working on those boards. We once worked on a board that had a dog piss on it and I could not bear the smell. I stopped, I could not work on it. This one here, luckily, I do not smell anything as of yet, but we do not know what's gonna happen when we start applying hot air on the board. The smell may magically appear in the air. We'll see. And right off the bat, we do see some damage on one of the RAM chips. The board has 16 RAM chips, DDR3, 512 megabytes each, a total of eight gigs. So damage here. And I was able to locate damage elsewhere also. I forgot where. Okay, it looks like we have damage in this area here. Let's take a look under the microscope and see if we can save this board. Hopefully, we're not going to smell anything. Customer said it's been a while since that happened. So maybe the pee evaporated. Who knows? Who knows? I'm not a pee expert. Okay, this does not look like pee to me. Maybe the cat sneezed on it. Okay, so far so good. These are the RAM chips. More of that stuff here. I do not know what that is. Okay, so the damage starts from here. And look at that RAM chip, bombarded. It's dried, sun-dried piss. Let's continue with the inspection. We have uh, some corrosion here. I mean, once we're done working on the board, we'll put it in the ultrasonic machine and give it a good wash. And look at that. We have more of that corrosion on this area of the board. So that's basically it. I think what we can do here, I'll just replace this chip, this chip, I'll test and see if those are usable or if they're testing bad. We can change this one also. We're going to reflow the RAM chip. And I think that should be it. I'll test some capacitors at random to make sure we do not have a short of any type on the board. And then we're going to give it a good ultrasonic cleaning and hopefully that will fix the problem. If it doesn't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this board. We have. 1200 tickets that we need to get done so maximum i'm going to spend on this board is probably half an hour 40 minutes that's the time i give to every device that i work on maximum usually i'm pretty quick i get things done fast but things like this can take time i do not allow myself to just keep spending hours and hours working on one device all right, so without wasting too much time, let's go ahead and start replacing components. We do not know if these are good or not, but I'm going to change them anyway. And I'm going to have the fume extractor as close as possible to that board. I do not want to smell any of that stuff. Okay, so let's start with this one here. And MOSFETs are known to fail under these conditions. They are very fragile components. So it doesn't make sense to even test them. We're gonna just get rid of them. And I do not like the way this component looks. Uh, this one I'm gonna keep. We're going to use our fine steel brush just to brush off 
any corrosion on that board. Nice. Now we're gonna pre-apply solder on those pads. Those three are on the same pad. This is on a separate pad, the gate. And those four are on the same pad. That should be good. Okay, uh, very nice. Okay, so we're gonna grab our donor Xbox and we're gonna remove the chips from here. Let's put that shit right over here. Okay, so this is done. Those four pins are connected to one pad. Those three pins are connected to one pad and the gate is connected to one pad. Let's go ahead and do this one. Very nice. And finally, or not finally, we still have two more components after this one. The resistors or filters. But let's solder the last chip. So I'm not in the center of the screen, but I cannot move right now. Very nice, just press down while the chip is aligned. And we have a perfectly soldered IC. We can touch up on it if we want, but we do not have to. Okay. Two more components to solder. And now we're gonna reflow those two components down in place and make everything look nice and pretty. That's it. So this area of the board is done. Let's clean up before we move on to fixing the RAM chip. Okay, so the area is back like new. Now, for the fun part, let's take a look at this area. Maybe we can clean up some of that sun-dried cat pee. 
nice and crunchy. And then again, luckily the board has no smell, otherwise I would not have been able to work on it. So what we're going to do here is reflow the chip. We're going to reflow the chip. And then after we're done, we're going to put the board in the ultrasonic machine. And we'll let Big Boss reassemble the board. And a lot of people keep asking, who's Big Boss? Who's Big Boss? I mentioned it in a lot of videos. He's my uncle from my mom's side. And he's been working with me for approximately, I think, eight, nine years. Big Boss is not my dad. Big Boss is my uncle from my mom's side. My dad is another person. Okay, I think we should clean up before we continue because the piss is out of control. Let's try again. Okay, I just smelled something. Roasty. <coughs> like burnt peanuts. That's what I smell right now. Uh, it's not funny. Oh, the smell is getting worse. <coughs> Maybe this. Okay, right after this repair, I'm gonna have to sanitize all my tweezers, the ones that we used for this job, because this is disgusting. And that's why I do not like to work on devices that has any type of piss on them. And I never ever work on devices that are infested, roaches or whatever the case may be. I experienced that once and never again. Okay, so I just did an ultrasonic cleaning on the board. It's still wet. We dipped it in alcohol, and now we're gonna preheat it for about five minutes so alcohol can evaporate and the board will be back like no. We do not know if what we did will solve the problem. We do not know if there is anything else wrong with the board or if the board does not work after doing this, then we're gonna give up on it and we're just gonna send it back or call the customer to come and pick up. So we'll see. Now you have to remember one thing. Fixing a device depends on how much time you want to spend on it. We cannot afford to spend hours and hours and hours working on one device. I did what I had to do. We did a physical inspection. We narrowed down the problem to certain areas on the board. We replaced the components. We reflowed the RAM chip. And uh, I tested a lot of capacitors on the board just to ensure that we do not have a short anywhere on the board. I checked on the power MOSFETs. And uh, that's everything that I can do. If this does not work for whatever reason, I'm going to tell Big Bus to just reassemble it. We're going to call it quits and call the customer to come and pick up. We have a lot of viewers that ask, for example, let's say we are working on a laptop and it turns out that the CPU is what's wrong with the laptop or the GPU is what's wrong with the laptop. We have viewers on YouTube that ask, why don't you replace the CPU or the GPU on the laptop? Can it be done? Of course it can be done. But you have to think about the time involved replacing the CPU or GPU and whether this device will work after replacing the CPU or GPU. We may spend two or three, four hours working on replacing a CPU and then at the end the device may not work. So we wasted four hours of our day. We could have fixed five, 10, 15 devices in those four or five hours. Uh, so it's not efficient or smart to work on repairs like that. Uh, just like on this motherboard, we did what we had to do. If the board works, great. If it doesn't work, then we're gonna call it quits and it's enough time spent on this board.
And let me just quickly show you how many tickets we have in the system right now. 1,106 tickets. I mean, if we do 20, 30, 40 devices a day, it's going to take us a long time to go through the 1,106 tickets. And that's why we have a note on our website. It's going to take three to four weeks to get to your device. Or if you want expedited, you can pay extra and we can expedite the repair. If you look at the devices that we're going to be working on, you see we have a Bensky, we have a Google Pixel Book, we have a phone simply stopped working, charging port, key fob repair, iPod 3G Nano, no power. We have an HP Spectre X360, we have a USB-C port replacement. We have an EFI removal, Asus ROG no power, stock on recovery mode, switch light, Xbox One S, liquid damage, HNS Minimax tuner, a broken thumb drive, Nintendo Switch, modded cap replacement, iPad 5 no charge, charger port issues on what? Phone not charging, and we have a Kingston 32 gigabyte USB stick, data recovery most likely. We have a computer data recovery, we have Xbox One X retimer, we have iPad Pro 12.9 no touch after screen replacement, Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch no power, HP laptop heatsink, SSD OS, key fob lock and trunk open is not working, so on and so forth. We have an HNS Mini Max, we have a repair iPad Pro first gen, iPad, non-functional trackpad, firmware password reset, Xbox One X, PH transmitter, five wire soldering, one power on, mini max, cell phone. These are the titles of some of the devices that needs to get done. So we have 1,106 items and you can understand why in this business you have to be efficient and you have to be smart. So having said all that, I'm gonna give this to Big Boss and hope for the best. The board is super clean, no more smell, no more cat piss, but we'll see, we'll see, I'll be back. Okay, so Big Boss reassembled the board and he said that the console is not working. It powers on and then off, on and off, on and off, on and off. It does not stay on. We're going to call the customer to come and pick up and we're not going to do any more work on it. We tried our best and that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though it's a no fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.